she just used me to stretch. I thought she was gonna console me. That was really rude. <laughs> Hey tiny turtles, welcome back to my channel. I'm holding my little microphone because today is a very special day. Is it ASMR day? No, it's not. It's my birthday, woo! Which is why I'm posting this on a Saturday instead of a Friday or a Sunday because my birthday is on a Saturday. Anyways, I thought I would do a little Q&A, a little special birthday Q&A for all of you guys because I realized I've never done something like this before. So let's just sit down, chat, and hopefully after this video you learn a little bit more about me because I guess you just see some random girl on the internet making videos about her life but you don't really know things about me that are like little fun facts, little life events. So I have 22 questions set up. So let's get started. I have my little mochi with me right here as well, who was, surprisingly enough, my 15th birthday gift? 16th? You know, I already have lost the years already. I'm pretty sure she was my 16th birthday gift from my parents because, yeah, she has a question to herself later on in like the middle. But let's just go through the questions in order that I wrote down. These are from you guys that I asked you on Instagram, plus ones that I think would be like beneficial for you guys to know about me, like my zodiac or what's it called, horoscope? I don't know. But anyways, number one, how old are you? I am 22. As of today, August 24th, was born in 2002, and that makes me a Virgo and year of the horse. If we're talking Chinese zodiacs, I don't know any significance about that. I look up, I used to be pretty good at looking up like Virgo horoscope of the day, but um, now I kind of just gave up. Is that a Virgo thing to do? I have no idea. I'm also INFJ. That's my MBTI. Let me know yours in the comments. Where did the name Kuni Lipu come from? So it was probably the year 2020, we were all in lockdown. Lies, we were actually going to a restaurant, like things started opening up, so it could have been late 2020, early 2021. So we were at a restaurant and I was like, I think I wanna start a social media account that's like more public because prior to then, I've just been on private Instagram just with my family and stuff. But I wanted to do something publicly because I wanted to try my try content creation. I don't know what in my right mind told me to do that because I have never done anything like that before until we're here. So I was thinking of names and my nickname in high school was Quinny the Pooh. We each had to have a nickname for our rifle team and that was my nickname. So I went with that. But... The thing was, Quinny the Pooh is so basic, that username was taken. So at that time, my sister was learning French, and so I thought, Les, like, the, right? So, Quinny the Pooh. You know, that was my way to surpass the username guidelines, and it was something interesting, unique, and I thought it was really cute and unique to who I was. And Pooh has always been one of my favorite characters. It was always Pooh and Stitch. So... Yeah, that's how the name was formed. Thus, here we are. If you could bring three things to a deserted island, what would you pick? Well, I've watched a lot of Naked and Afraid in my life, so I would say a fire starter because I feel like I would be so scared that in a wild situation, I'm gonna need help. And that's using a cheap method such as a fire starter. Additionally, probably something to cut with. And then the last item I would take, probably a tarp, because I feel like if I'm on an island, I have enough like mental skills and I've seen it on the internet so many times. I think I could make rope out of coconut husk. If we're talking like if I were to be on Hawaii without pre-people and just live off the land, I feel like I could do it. But if I'm like in the Amazon, then um bugs I uh, no but I can deal with like Hawaii landscape I feel like I could live I could catch fish I could I don't think I could like hunt down pigs if I had to I would but yeah 
it depends what kind of situation we're talking about. If I was in like a poisonous situation, then mm, yeah, a tarp, definitely. Because if I was plopped down naked and afraid, then a tarp would be used for clothing as well as shelter, protect you from the rain. The rain, if it gets into your skin, it becomes like the osmosis happens and then you get pruny and then your skin is more delicate when it comes to stepping on things. But I would make tarp slippers, so... Tarp, fire starter, and a knife. Next, what is your favorite memory you have had with your dog? This is my dog. Her name is Mochi. I would say my best memory... I had a lot of downfalls with her because she's run away so many times. So I guess my happiest memory... Besides me just like staring at her as she sleeps like, oh, she's here would be the day we got her or the day I saw her after we adopted her. Because here's how the story went. It was years ago and because we didn't like have any animals, my dad would take us to the Humane Society to look at the dogs just for funsies and I would always cry afterwards when we were washing our hands getting ready to go home. Because I was like, I'm never going to get a dog. Why does he even do this to us? I like to go and I like to look at the dogs. But realistically, we've never owned one before. So why start now? Yeah, it was really sad. That's what happened every single time. But then we met Mochi. Well, my dad saw Mochi in the corner all meek and sad. So he's like, oh, why don't you look at that one? And I was like that one that's so ugly <laughs> compared to all like the little shih tzus and the little puppies i never imagined myself with a poi dog you know like a mixed kind dog i always like the ones around me were like shih tzus you know very cutesy like boo the viral dog um ones like that you know but i feel like those kinds of dogs are too cute it just, they get boring. No personality. Kind of like me. <laughs> so I needed something a little bit on the meh side. And I feel like Mochi's a meh, you know? She's very cute in my eyes. Her personality shines much more than her looks. In the beginning, she had like this brown V. Like, now it's faded because of her old age and it just turned white. But before, she used to have like a very defined v kind of pattern on her head that was not cutesy so i was like that one <laughs> and my dad's like yeah yeah that one so we decided to spend time with her outside and you're allowed to like walk her or whatever we didn't have any leash or anything at that time because again it was a very spontaneous hey let's go check out the dogs at the humane society as one does just to see, pet the cats, etc. So I wasn't expecting anything out of it, you know? I was like, oh, why get so attached to a dog just to let it go rot back in the cages and then someone else either adopt it or they get put down, you know what I mean? I never really understood why we went so many times just because in the back of my mind, I knew that's what would happen to these dogs. So I didn't want to get too attached to any of them, even though... I knew we weren't going to go back to like see them again because it's always a fresh round of dogs. We would go probably once a month, I would say. So it's not like the same dogs would be in there still. But yeah, for some reason, my dad's like, oh, we should take that one out to play because it looks so scared. <laughs> so we got the most antisocial one. We took her out. We walked her around. At this point, again, I have never owned a dog before, and prior to that, my auntie had a dog, his name was Cookie, and he would stay at my grandma's house, so whenever I would go to that house, I would pet that dog, but you know, very as though not my dog, so I didn't have to feed it or pick up the poops. I would just pet it, give him treats, stuff like that, you know, basic stuff that you wouldn't yeah, I didn't know any ownership skills when it came to having a dog besides you gotta walk him. 
and pet him and give it treats. You know what I mean? So once we did leave, I was crying in the car and I was like, I think I've just come to the realization that I'm never going to get a dog. And I was crying in my seat because we didn't pick up Mochi the same day we saw her. So I was crying because that was the first time like I got so far, so close yet so far to owning a dog, you know. I've always wanted a dog since I was little, but I just thought it wasn't going to be possible unless I moved out. So we left and I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Just like any other day. <laughs> and then the next day um, at night, I get a call. Well, I don't get a call. My mom gets a call and I just so happen to be in the room. Mind you, by this time, my parents were divorced. So I was at my mom's house and then my dad was here where I am now. And then my mom was like, what? Because she didn't really want a dog. So that's why I just grew up knowing that we wouldn't be able to have a dog, if that makes sense. But my dad used to own a lot of dogs in his younger age. So in his mind, he has owned a dog before. So has my mom. I don't, it wasn't like her dog specifically, but I think she did have to take care of it sometimes, but not as much as like a sole caretaker, if that makes sense. So she's like, what did you do? Quinn's going to be so happy. And then I was like, what am I going to be so happy about? Little curious teenage me was like, what's going on? And then I I don't even know how it happened. I was just sitting on the couch and she was sitting on the floor in front of me. And I was like, did dad get that dog? <laughs> At first, her name was Nugget. That was her um, shelter given name. And I was like, oh my gosh, he got Nugget. <laughs> and then I cried out of joy. I think that was the first time I've ever cried out of sheer happiness it was a memorable moment and then I was so excited to go back to his house and see her for the first time and she was so scared because I guess she was um wapapped I don't know if I'm about to say the a word abused um but yeah she wouldn't go on the carpet unless she got dad's approval now she jumps on whoever's bed and is pretty much the she sits wherever she wants in the house essentially and then when we first got her she had major she has major separation anxiety from us so we used to put up a baby gate she ate through the hard plastic of the baby gate jumped over chairs broke through our jealousy windows all of that but those aren't the good times so yeah anyways we're talking about the good moment and I was so happy to see her. Mochi was a name that I've always had in my mind. What a basic dog name to have, right? It was either going to be Mochi or Stitch because those were the two names that I've always wanted when I had a dog. And then I feel like, <laughs> you know, Mochi, I would imagine like a little fluffy Shih Tzu, not my little Chihuahua mix Terrier-esque girly. But... I used to say that the name Mochi, it was because she was white. She's just a mochi that fell on the floor because she has a brown spot on her butt. And my mom would be like, oh, is she dirty? <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's like how she was born. <laughs> so yeah, now in her old age of 10, 11, 12, she just lounges around and lives her life. And hopefully she lives another 10 years because I heard smaller dogs tend to live a longer time than larger dogs. She's a good size in her old age, especially once the brown part of her head faded. Everybody thinks she's a puppy and so cute. And now my cousins are able to see her and they're like, oh, look at Mochi, so cute. And it's a fun time. I have the same memories like having Cookie around as Mochi is with my younger cousins. So yeah, it's a cute thing to witness and she deals with a lot. She doesn't bark at all because I think 
she's never barked really since we got her unless like the mailman or if someone seems like a real threat like if someone's running and she's caught off guard then she'll be on guard like you know but yeah to other dogs she is a little bit feisty i tried taking her to the dog park once she tried to book it underneath the fence and that was the last time we've been taking her to there so yeah ever since then she we walk her um yeah she's my little best friend Okay, now back to the questions because I kind of got off topic for a while. Um, what is your favorite way to spend a day off? Mm, I like filming content. That's what I love doing. I like cooking. Um, yeah, I have a pretty boring life. I don't have any friends. So usually I just sit around, hang out with Mochi, maybe take her on walk sometime, go to Target, Tokyo Central um yeah watch below deck do mindless things and basically rot in my bed what is your favorite food (sighs) this is a very hard question because i've had a passion for food my whole life i like to say i want to experience the world through food it's always been a passion for me to travel the world and try different things And living in Hawaii, it's such like a culturally blended place. I am blessed to be able to have grown up here and have tried so many things. I would say my favorite food is not limited to, but includes Hawaiian plate, um, squid luau with a side lao lao, poi, lomi salmon, haupia. What else is there? Chicken long rice? on the same one because sometimes if I'm gonna eat Hawaiian food then I'm gonna go all out and yeah that is my favorite Hawaiian food now we got Japanese food I really like ramen um sushi sashimi poke (gasps) poi poke bowl I love poi poke bowls which is basically instead of rice they use poi and then they put the poke on that so good so good um chinese food dim sum uh what kind of dim sum chicken feet yeah uh filipino food i like banana lumpia italian i don't really eat a lot of italian food so i would say like a freshly made caesar salad with like fresh anchovies korean food um like a k bbq kind of moment with all the banchans you know what i mean and yeah that's pretty much all the cultures i eat through on like a very normal basis i'm trying to think what else i eat besides obviously mcdonald's or taco bell those are my comfort foods oh and my one of my favorite comfort foods is juk made by my grandma with thousand year old egg in it whenever i was sick and my dad would ditch me at her house (laughs) because obviously he had to go to work she would always make me joke with thousand year old egg and i always have to have that thousand year old egg it's so good very not healthy for you i don't think but you know it's an egg so yeah you know the black egg i love it i know a lot of people hate it I love it a lot and it's like very much a comfort food for me especially when my grandma makes it my dad makes it just doesn't hit the same you know yeah and her one ton she tried teaching me and she says I'm the best person at rapping so that's also a very close to heart food that I eat what am I studying I am currently studying finance there's nothing much to that i just said if i can manage my own finances then i'll be fine i took something out of college you know i don't feel passionate about it as much as my classmates do like they're like oh i'm trading i'm gonna go to new york and do like the big stock exchange and i'm like go for it yeah i want to be a content creator (sighs) but i don't say that i'm like 
Oh, me too. Same. <laughs> Have you ever dated before? No. Because I just don't trust people. Yeah. My biggest pet peeve? Um... People judging me before they actually know me and try to avoid me because of that. I would say I have pretty bad RBF. I feel like I don't show a lot of emotion in my forehead area. So when I actually started my first job, my manager was like, the customers don't like you because you don't smile enough. Or she's like, oh, you should smile more. But I'm happy on the inside. It's just hard to show it on the outside without my face getting tired 100% of the time. I'm just not very expressive in how I look. So while I'm super happy, that may not show in my face just because like that takes more effort to move my facial muscles, you know? Therefore, when a lot of people meet me, I like smile, hello. And then I like go into my relaxing face, which a lot of people may find off-putting, judgmental, and yeah. I mean, if someone else was doing that to me, I would feel like, oh, they must not like me. So I get it. But at the same time, it's like, just give me a chance, please. I'm just trying to be a friend. I'm just trying to be nice. <sighs> What's my biggest fear? Rejection, disappointment, and possums. Mm -hmm. What creators do you watch? I watch a lot of Stephanie Sue. She's my like number one probably watched videos. I remember watching her during quarantine a lot, and then I would rewatch her videos, and that's really big because I don't rewatch a lot of people's videos. I don't even like rewatching movies. Even my favorite movies, I'm like once every few years is okay because I feel like it's repetitive but Stephanie's videos are always just so entertaining and yeah they're just fun so other than her I watch like my fam or Evelyn Ha or all the Ha sisters um or whatever travel people I'll watch a lot of, I have phases, like sometimes I'll watch a lot of Food Network because that's what I used to watch since I was young. Fox, all the Gordon Ramsay shows, Below Deck, Mediterranean, the original, and Down Under. Um, what else? I watch like house listings. For a minute, I wanted to do real estate, but then I looked at myself and I was like, <laughs> be realistic you're not pretty enough to sell real estate so that dream kind of like disappeared faded I stamped on it but yeah those are the things I watch as of right now oh, I also watch the bear and just whatever shows come across and YouTube videos that I'm feeling at the time it always revolves sometimes I don't even feel like watching I'll listen to podcasts like Just Trish. I like her podcast. Cancelled. I know they're going through like some stuff right now, but just for entertainment pur purposes, I listen to them. All of Stephanie Sue's podcasts I'll listen to while I'm at work. And it just passes time. So yeah, those are the things I take in media-wise. But I can also scroll through TikTok for like hours. I call it research for making my own content, but who am I fooling? Hmm. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Mm. Here's my thing. I feel like if I had a superpower, then there must be someone else that would have a superpower too. And then we would go up against each other. And that just takes too much effort. But if I had to choose one, I would probably choose super speed because I need to run away when... The world is a dangerous place, and if I have to run, I get asthma real quick. So realistically, I feel like in order to run away from dangerous people, that would be a useful skill. Additionally, if I can read faster, that would be good too. I don't remember finishing a single book since middle school, so that would be nice. Um, what else would I use it for? Obviously, getting to places, I could get to work faster than taking a car. And yeah, that's what I would have. 
What is one thing you would change about yourself? Probably my face because I have a lot of insecurity about it. I have like a very big round face and my nose is kind of wide. One time my grandma was like, oh, Quinn, you have a wide nose. And I was like, I have the same nose as you. So I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> and then she just was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like... Rude. But I feel like... <laughs> I feel that my face is different parts of my family. And I saw a post or a saying from... Bella Hadid, Gigi Hadid, one of the sisters, and they were like, oh, I have my mom or grandma's nose, something like that, and that's what makes her beautiful and unique, and I was like, Ugh. then I guess I like my face too. Mm. But yeah, for a long time, I was really debating whether or not I wanted to smash my nose, so because I didn't have money, and my family didn't have much money, like extra money to pay for cosmetic surgery, but if I were to break it, then insurance would cover it. So there was a big part in my lower school slash high school days where I was like, I just need one door slam to the nose and I could get a nose job, get a rhinoplasty, might as well get shave my jaw so I can have more of a V-shaped jaw, maybe move my hairline or add hair to my bald patch over here. That would be good too. And probably get liposuction on my thighs. That's how I used to think back in the day. Now I'm trying to accept myself. And I look at myself in the mirror. And I cry. But it's a learning process. And I'm learning how to deal with myself every single day. How is culture and history important to you? I thought this was a really cool question. So whoever said that on Instagram, go you. But I feel like culturally, I'm so... My blood-wise, I'm so diverse. That's like bragging, but I'm ethnically... Is that the right word? I always get it mixed up. In my blood, I'm Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Hawaiian, and Scottish. I've been born and raised in Hawaii. So culturally, I think... I lean towards obviously American because hello, we're part of America, we speak English, but at the same time, watching Hawaiian people struggle to not get their language and their culture totally exploited for revenue, it always conflicts with myself. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because I just have sympathy towards those people, empathy? sympathy anyway that's the lack of books that i read but you know i feel like it's just feeling bad for this group of people who are either like bought out of their own homes have to move to other places and i'm very grateful to be able to live here and at the same time looking at my future in hawaii i want to live here my whole family is here for the most part besides like cousins who live in the mainland but I I want to live here. I feel safest here. I don't feel safe in the mainland. I don't picture myself anywhere else. Obviously, I do like the mainland because it's like, wow, billboards and it's such a foreign place to me. But life-wise, I need the slowness of Hawaii. Well, I was going to say Hawaii and Hawaii at the same time. Hawaii. <laughs> And my auntie who came from California is always like, people here are so slow. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm just one of those slow people. Maybe I need more time to grow than, say, Californians who move to New York when they're 21, 18. And all of those people that I see on the internet, like, all living alone by themselves. And I'm like, man, houses here are like a million dollars to live in a safe area. So my hopes are low. I plan to live with my parents for until I can raise a million dollars. So please subscribe. That would be very helpful. But I feel like culturally, honestly, I've taken so many Hawaiian courses, not because it was just, well, in our curriculum, we had to take Hawaiian courses for a few years in high school or in middle school. And then in college, because I go to a 
Hawaii University, I had to take some Hawaiian courses as well. Not language studies in particular, but more cultural studies. And just learning about all the Hawaiians that were displaced and all the sad things that happened, like the overthrow. It makes me really sad. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I want to own land. I want to own a house. But then is that the Chinese part of me just wanting that land for monetary value, monetary gain? I mean, I plan to live here. So it's not it's not like I'm using it to sell or anything. But everyone has their own things. And I just don't know. Because I'm not drawn to a specific culture specifically, I just want to live my life, okay? Like, the Chinese family side is the most prominent, I would say, in predicting or telling me what to do future-wise. Like, yo, you got to get a high-paying job and all of that kind of stuff. Very Chinese, work hard until you, like, can't work no more. But the American side's like, just live life. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I'm conflicted with my history and then moving forward, I want to make a good impact into the world, but I feel like I'm just so small, which is why I started making videos to like talk to the small people because the small people really add up, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know how you took in that question. It was a very deep question. I'm not even sure how to really answer it. But culture and history is very important to me because I want to honor it. I want to respect it. They say history repeats itself. I've seen it in my day to day, just like with little things. And I want to learn from it. I want to grow from historical mistakes and stay true to myself and be my own person. Be proud of being mixed and taking in all of these cultures and becoming me. Yeah, that sounds weird. I don't know. If you had to live somewhere else, where would it be? Oh, right after the culture question, we get that question. Um, If I had to, probably on a different island. If I was kicked out of Oahu for some random reason um although the culture there is different like i don't know maui it seems like it's so small oahu's very city without being continental u.s so when we were on maui taking a tour the guide was like oh you're from the city and i get that we're very developed as in we have the most tourists and the most, the most, I guess, developments. So a lot more rental houses, a lot more targets, you know, basic mainland things that other islands don't have. So I would probably say my second choice would be Maui, followed by, I want to say Big Island just because I've gone there the most, but realistically on both islands i think there's only one main road so if that main road closes down then you're like stuck i mean you know major detours and whatever but oahu's good in that there are different ways to get to different places and i've always been so scared to drive in the continental u.s like what if i take a wrong turn and end up in another state That's always been my biggest fear. That's really scary. Like when I was in Washington state, I saw the sign for Idaho and I was like, oh, oh my goodness. What if my dad misses the turn? Cannot change lanes in time. I don't know. And I feel like the continental U.S. is just such a foreign place. I would like to go again. I want to visit California, go to Disneyland, go to New York. Um... I definitely want to go to New York one day, see the Met, um, but do I picture myself living there? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think so. It's just too, it's not as family oriented based on what I see through the media 
as Hawaii, I would say. So, no. I love my family too much. What made you decide to have two jobs? Um, I don't want to say, well, it's obvious, but it's pretty obvious in that uh, money. <laughs> the one job that I've had before was minimum wage, pretty much. And I only worked on the weekends. I could have asked for more hours during the week, but I've been there for like five years. So I feel like it was time to start something new. I actually wasn't planning to work with my auntie, but she was like one day I told her I was looking for another job and she's like, oh, you can just come work for me, shred papers. And I was like, oh, okay <laughs> so that was very spontaneous and very out of character for me to do something so spontaneous I was kind of shocked in myself that I said yes but it's an air air conditioned job and I get paid for it so that's pretty cool I get paid to basically hang out with my auntie so I mean she does the very working stuff and I just do side things but I just I actually lived with her the f like 10 years at least 10 years from the time my parents split to the time I was a junior in high school so from ages 5 to 16 so 10 years about and yeah I just felt very comfortable with her and then not seeing her for so many years here and there because you know that's when the vids came and yeah I was like oh might as well so I have fun spending time with her and then I have job number two and then job number three making content trying to find time and then also trying to become like a full-time college student manage all of that stuff together. It's a little challenging but my dad was like well I had three jobs in college and I'm like then I must also have three jobs in college so you don't have to keep on telling me that I get it I get how hard you worked. To a point, I feel like I haven't worked hard enough just because I have been only working minimum wage jobs. But it's very hard to find stuff that's more than minimum wage that I feel comfortable with. Like, down the street, I could have been a dough roller, but then one time I went to that pizza place and then there was a heavily drunk person. And that makes me very uncomfortable to be around that kind of people. So I was like, then I can't do that. And yeah, it's just, am I just too picky? Possibly, but also because I am a student. So at least with my first job, my manager trusts me at this point, And she's very, very like, she knows me. So I work hard and she's okay with the limited days of me working because I do have to manage being a full-time student at the same time. So yeah, and then my auntie, obviously it's much more lenient and I can come in whenever I want, choose my days. Oh, she's crying, probably having nightmares. But I would basically choose the days I wanna go in, work with her schedule, usually a nine to five or nine to six whenever she wants to go to work. Oh no, Mochi, don't cry. She gets nightmares sometimes, she cries. We think it's like her past family because they found her on the streets. Again, she was like wapapped when she was younger. I did not mean for that to be funny, but it just came out that way and I find it funny. Not the wapap, but you know, the, the wapap sound, okay? I feel very bad for her, therefore I hope to give her the best life she can have, obviously. She means the world to me, I love her. When I had no friends, when I have no friends, presently, she's my rock. She's what I do things for. Because hopefully I want us to, I want her to be alive by the time I get a new house, you know? My dream was to live in a big fancy Hawaiian house with Joe Jr., my turtle, my second turtle, the one I plan to get once I own a house as well as Mochi. But I realized in the past year that her cataracts is really coming in and she's getting old. She's like 10, so 
yeah. Um, what is the biggest challenge you have faced? Hmm, probably my parents' divorce. I want to say probably because I've been living like that since I was five. They split when I was five and then got divorced when I was like early teens, I think. So I was aware of things that were happening. But it was just a big transition from living at one household to then going to my auntie's house where my mom lived. And then going back and forth was the biggest transition because I would forget something at one house and then have to ask my parents to drive me to the other house to go pick up said thing. And then, you know, go from house to house. My hand has dog hair all over it from petting Mochi. She sheds a lot. Um... But yeah, just the transition and going back and forth. Even now, having moved into just my dad's house, it feels so different. And then now I have to make a point to spend time with my mom. And that's another difficulty. It makes me a little sad because I don't like playing favorites or anything like that. It was just... It was just for the situation, it was easier just to move in with my dad, but I do see my mom at least once every few weeks. So yeah, it's just kind of hard since I work and then she works when I'm free, I work when she's free. So even if it's only for a couple hours, we still see each other. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out because I've only been living at my dad's full time I want to say a month around, if anything. No, less than a month because I had to move out late July because our lease was up. So yeah, then I had to move everything here. You guys saw the vlogs, but just trying to make time to spend time with her has been an unfortunate challenge. I would spend a lot of time with her. I love my mom, but making that time is a challenge. Oh, why am I sad? <laughs> okay, next question. Oh, my eyes are getting teary, but I'm like, suck it up. I feel like the policeman in Cloudy with a Chance Meatballs when he's like tearing up and then he's like, suck it up. And then the tears go back into his eye ducts. I feel like that's me. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Hopefully owning my Hawaiian home with Mochi <laughs> and Joe Jr. Um, I want to do content full time. That's the major goal. I want to travel the world at the same time. Although the world is a very dangerous place. Whether it be politics, people around you, people, substances. So many crimes happen. Um, Natural disasters even. I heard there's something going on with Japan that some major earthquake or something like that might hit them within the next 30 years and my dad's like oh I don't want you going there by yourself if that's gonna happen but you only die once right it's not YOLO because you're living every day but you only die once that's what I saw on a Hallmark card I thought it was funny (laughs) because I'm like wow that's true I do want to experience the world and then I want to settle down I'm the oldest of my cousins, so obviously I want to see them grow as well. My oldest cousin is eight years old, and I feel like I'm a big sister to all of them. Obviously, I have my sister, who's 17, so yeah, but the other ones, I'm like, oh, they're so cute. They're still so innocent, and I want them to, you know, live a good life, and Later in the years, if they can, like, sleep over at my house, that would be very cute because I've watched all of them grow up, which is something I didn't watch my sister do that much because I was growing up, you know, at the same time. And then I was, like, 14, I think, when my first cousin was born, so just being aware and alert old enough that I can take a bunch of videos of her. I have so many videos of her. Of the other two, I don't really because one was born in like California and then the other was born here. I just didn't see them that much because she was a vid baby. So 
I saw her a little bit later, but my first cousin, she used to stay at my grandma's house all the time, so I would always, like, carry her, and she doesn't have any other siblings, so we kind of took her as well, <laughs> in the sense that, like, she would, she when she wasn't in school, she would, her role models were my sister and I, if that makes sense, so... We used to take her to places, take her to Taco Bell, eat at all of these little fun things, take her to Costco, and she was just so cute. She is so cute, but yeah, I just want to watch them grow and have good lives and be happy. By then, the oldest would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, ooh, and then that means I'll be, if I'm 22, 27, ooh. <laughs> that's old not really that old but when you're in like your teenage years you're like oh 30 is like elderly and at this point I'm like 27 is not that bad that's only five years away <laughs> I'm getting to that stage in life and then the youngest she's four so she'll be nine <laughs> that's so young so much life to live I wish we had like a closer age but at the same time, I think it's good that my sister and I are four or five years apart. And then the rest of my cousins are younger, so I'm able to see them grow up. And it's interesting to watch rather than be an older sister and just be like, mm, we fight a lot, my sister and I. But with the cousins, it's like Santa Claus. You know, you're only there for a little bit and then they're gone. So... It's like you don't see them that often, but when you do, it's a very special, and I cherish those moments a lot with them. What, any advice you would give to your younger self? <sighs> mm. Don't give up. That's a very basic one, but, uh, oh, start content creation earlier because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to regret posting whatever. But at the same time, it's like you're slowly taking those steps to grow. And that is very good. So to all the younger people out there and to the older people, I don't care who you are. Just if you had something in your mind that you wanted to do for so long, just do it. It doesn't really matter. There's always a backup plan out there for you. Like my backup plan, just get a just have like five jobs even if they pay minimum wage it's enough to live you know what I mean don't spread yourself too thin at the same time that's something I have had a hard bleh. that's something I've had a hard time trying to manage but it all works out in the end you just gotta trust the process if you don't like to do something it's okay to quit okay to try new things even if it's only for a little bit I mean, some things you just have to stick out. Like, I posted my first video and I was like, oh, should I do this anymore? But then instead I was like, no, Quinn, turn back around, make more content. It's what you like to do. Before I actually posted, I had a couple videos that I filmed just by myself. And those are so bad. I deleted them off the existence of this earth because it was only on my laptop. But yeah. I'm glad I did those. They're part of my learning process, even though they were terrible. Mm -hmm. What is your number one bucket list item? Mm. I guess this is four bucket list items, but I want to see all my cousins graduate. <laughs> oh, why am I going to cry? I'm always so emotional when it comes to the cousins because I'm just so protective. I want them to have the best lives ever, you know? And my sister, I want her to graduate as well. But I know, like, just how we were raised will be okay. And she has me to support her and watch her basically every move. And that's something I gotta work on too because sometimes I could be a little bit too much on her. And that's something I gotta fix. But to the other cousins, I'm like, oh. I just want them to be happy too. Before when I first heard I'm, I was going to have another cousin after being cousinless for like 14 years, I was like, 
oh, I'm going to cherish them. Honestly, I thought I was only going to have one. And then another one came the next year. And then another one came two years, four years, four years after that. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Because our family used to be so small. My bucket list item. Because my parents are divorced, it's like I have to separate everything between my dad's side and my mom's side. So I would say for my dad's side, we did go on a family trip to Alaska last year. But my uncle and two of my cousins were too little to go. So I would say definitely... (laughs) So cute. I treasure these moments too. So I would say I really want to go on a family trip with them. Last time we went on a cruise, my grandma was able to come with us. She was driving me crazy in the cabin because I was like seasick and then she was trying to make me feel better, but I just needed quiet. But she's like, oh, you should do this. You should do this. And I was like, grandma. (sighs) But I cherished that moment I was with her. And she always used to tell me that when probably when my first cousin was born, she's like, Oh, one day I want to take all of you to high tea, which is like a fancy tea, whatever. So when we went to Canada, I was able to group up my money and I got us a tea in Canada. That was really special. Unfortunately, two out of five cousins weren't able to go because they were, again, I guess too young to go on that trip. So they didn't get to spend my money But one day I hope to regroup and do that again because my younger cousin had a good time. My sister had a good time. My grandma had was so happy and it made me so happy, too. And I would also like to take another family trip with my mom's side of the family because I also love them, too. Like everybody's on an equal playing field in my mind. I don't play no favorites except when it comes to to the younger ones you know because they all hold special places in my heart and I love all of them so much and I want to spend time with them as much as possible and then especially with the older people like my grandmas I only have grandmas so I want to spend time with them before it's too late and it's stuff to do outside of the islands you know what I mean what is What do you want to be remembered for? I just want to be remembered as a kind person who, I don't want to say was a suck up, but did everything she could for everyone, family wise, you know, like I'm not going to give a hundred million dollars to a stranger, but I love my family so much because I don't have any friends outside of them. Besides Mochi, obviously. She's my best friend. She's my little fur daughter for the moment until I, like, get to that stage of having kids, you know? But for the time being, she is my baby. (laughs) And I want to be remembered as someone who cared about other people. And especially... (sighs) Someone that they're proud of. She just used me to stretch. I thought she was going to console me. That was really rude. (laughs) But isn't she so cute? I just don't want to be a disappointment. And I like say that in all of my crying videos. But I feel like today's a real day of reflection. So today, out of most days, I just don't want to disappoint people. I want to be remembered as the person who cared. As the person who made her family proud yeah and what is a message you would like to send your future self oh future self i gotta compose myself hello future 2025 20, 67 quinn i hope you are taking the little steps to success i hope you spend as much time working hard so you can Give back to your family because they deserve everything. Yeah, I'll see you whenever I see you. Whenever you decide to watch this video one day, I'll be here crying, wishing I could be future you already. Yeah, then I'll see y'all next time.